Hello everybody and welcome to Arganian's Puzzle Box. In this video I'll uh, show you how to make uh, this fire. Uh, you know it's all animated, it's all uh, made on one single plane and it looks quite interesting uh, just like your favorite Japanese uh, TV show, I'm sure of it. Uh, basically I'm going to show you how to use uh, the node editor to get this effect and some other effects if you like to and I'll, I'll show you step by step how to set this up and how to use it in a scene and then uh, I'm actually my, in, a, in a future tutorial that I'm going to do, I'm going to show you something like this and basically um, I'll, I'll put all of this, these things together like the fire that I've done, I'm just going to show you how to make uh, some other special effects that I'm going to add in there like explosions and other such things I'm going to add them in there and then you'll be able to see them and how I made them and hopefully you can do them yourself and you know be happy about it so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you learned something new, please leave a like, a comment and uh, you know, if you like, you know, just please feel free to subscribe. Thank you. So we start off in Blender and as you are well aware now, we're just gonna have to delete everything in the scene and start from scratch. The first thing we want to do is we want to add a plane and then with this plane, uh, we'd like to rotate it to 90 degrees like that and then what we want to do is we want to go into shaded mode because to be honest everything that's going to happen in our scene is going to be in shaded mode uh, sorry in render mode and make sure you're in eevee as this is an eevee tutorial maybe this wasn't apparent but uh, you know you know now it's uh, basically real time um, so we have our plane and we want to create a material for it. Um, again, I like to name my materials. I'm just gonna call this fire, although you know, this is gonna be the only material we're gonna have in our scene. Um, and now we're going to extend our viewports and we're gonna open our shader editor. Right, now that we have everything in here, we basically need to start deleting this because we don't need it. We need to add new nodes. So we'll start with the beginning of our uh, node, which is basically, oops, sorry about that. Uh, we need a texture coordinate node, and we're gonna add it over here. Now our plane is UV mapped anyway, so that's fine. You know, you don't need to UV unwrap it or anything like that. Uh, we're going to add a mapping node as well. And actually we're gonna have two of these as we need to, one to control the fire, another one to control the scale and so on, you know, the colors and, and, and other such things. The next step for us is to basically add a Fornoi texture. And we all love these. I mean, you know, they're always so nice to use. Now the Voronoi, we want to change to Smooth F1 as I found that to give us the best results. And you know, the rest of it, you can leave the way it is. Now in the mixture of all of this, we want to add some um, vertex, sorry, vector curves as well. And we want to connect our color from the Voronoi texture over into the uh, vector, no, sorry, into the fac. Uh, and once we do that, we then want to bring our UV from our texture coordinate and bring it over here into the vector of the vector curves. Now the vector curves then connects to the vector of mapping. We're gonna use uh, vector quite often in this. I'll, uh, you know, I'll let you know, I'll, I'll let you guys know uh, now. The next one, we want a noise texture, you know, to add some effects um, on, onto our uh, result. And we're gonna connect this to our vector. And then at this point, we wanna add a mix RGB. And we're gonna put it over here. Uh, our mapping then goes into here, into, you know, the first color and then the other one um, the sorry the fact of the noise texture needs to go in color too. Now we need this mapping to be connected to our UV as well so we're going to do that UV to vector and you know our material output is still pretty far away we're not there yet because we need two color ramps in this oops sorry color ramp not the other one not vector not uh, vertex color so we've got color ramp and we'll copy and you know copy paste so we have two of these. Now, one of these is going to decide where the fire is going to appear, and the other one is all gonna be all about its colors. So we want our color to connect to both of these color ramps. You know, each of them will serve a different purpose. Um, and make sure you've got clamp on over here. We do need our clamp. And after that, we want to add a transparent shader because 
we need our file to be transparent as you can imagine um, and we want to mix some shaders as well so we'll put it over here now the mixture of the shaders so so every time you you know you sort this one out you know you, you want to add a um, a node that will will, sh will decide where the texture is showing and where it isn't then you get your color ramp to be connected into the fac of our of our shader the transparent to be uh, you know it's obviously a shader so it goes in there and then the next color ramp will need to go in the other shader as well and we'll link everything together on our surface of the material so so far we've got well, well basically got nothing at the minute um, some things to add in the well we need our fire to glow so we'll need an emission adding over here that's what this is going to be out of the control for the emission like i've said now if you go into ev make sure you've got bloom on because that's going to help a lot with actually seeing the emissions properly right okay so we've got all these things in now we need to start playing a bit with some colors so we will use the color ramp over here and we want to bring this well actually we want to change it first to a constant uh, leave it as RGB constant and we want to add some more variations over here so you can see that al already you know we're changing the texture a bit um, so the first bit we'll just leave as black that's that's okay we're gonna add another slider in here we're gonna push it over on this side and we're gonna transform that slider into a let's say a yellowish color that should be okay and then we'll add a new slider as well we'll drag it over here and the um oh, wait one second because i think i messed it up right this color right over here this is our yellow right and then this other color um this other yellow here needs to be let's say an orangey color and then this other one over here we want this as a you know a bright red or something like that uh, imagine it as being the center of the fire it really all depends i mean you're going to play with these colors around to get the the effect that you want but you can see if we turn the emission on now the lightest color in the texture will light up even further which is basically what we want um, right so now we need to go up here and again we want to change this to a constant and basically we want to turn the slider on which is going to decide where our sort of where, where our texture is going to show up so we're just going to leave it around there for now i think it's going to be fine uh, i would try with a um, uh, now zero point not zero point eight sorry zero point three five yeah around there should be fine again it's all about your preferences and how it's going to look for you but you can play with these settings as much as you like now we're going to go back over here and basically we need another texture that we haven't added which is a gradient texture and we want to leave it over in here now the gradient is going to decide sort of how how our texture is going to be shaped so currently this is a linear and we don't need a linear what we need is a spherical and you can see that it's basically not centered where we want it now as you play with these sliders you can see how i can just move it around and, and so on and the idea behind this is that you want to set it up in place well you want to set it you want to set up the texture to where it needs to be so for example we can play with this setting uh that setting as well I'm not entirely okay with the with where the fire is sitting at the minute but we can move it around so something like that and we want to probably play with the scale let's just see something like that uh, Z the Z axis doesn't do anything for us in that re in that respect so we want to move it somewhere around in the center like so right so we got that there which is fine again we can play with a slider and see if we can add some more in there right one thing to do is to go to your material over here and make sure you set the blend mode to alpha blend and if we deactivate this now we can see that it's basically you can see through it and it's all looking nice and dandy and exactly like we want it right now we need to go into our vector curves over here and we basically go on to the y-axis and we can start playing with some of these settings again these will decide sort of where your embers are going to be sitting and so on so again it's all about preference and how you like to toy with it around you know it's all about what you want and how you want it to look 
So you can see our yellow over here. It's not exactly coming up as much as we want it. So we've got this uh, bright red. You see, now I'm bringing more of that yellow out. Um, so again, it's all depending on where I move these sliders and how I want to see them. So we'll just leave it like that for now. Right, now we're gonna go to our other mapping, which is basically deciding how, and you know, how the, sh how, again, how the shape is going to change and uh, as, as the, as the, um, the you know, the, this fire starts to be, to move. So what we want to do is we want to make a drive around our uh, Z axis, as that's gonna be the one that's going to move the, um, uh, you yeah, know, it's gonna move the fire. So basically what we want to do is we're going to go into the z-axis and we're going to say frame, sorry, we're going to add a hashtag frame times minus 0 0.05. See if that works okay. Now if we press spacebar, the animation will play over and over again, like you're seeing right now. So that's our fire right now moving and it's going to move for the entirety of the 250 frames or whatever you've got. It will never stop. So this will repeat itself over and over again. Uh, and it's all about, is the speed too much? So if you want to do, if you want to decrease the, the speed, go to a 0 0.03, for example, minus 0 0.03. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now, as it gives us a little bit more visualization as what's going on, basically, in there. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna move on to the rotation and some of the scaling, scale settings of this, um, you know, of this animation and we'll see how we can change it. Okay, so let's go on to our mapping over here and start playing with some of these settings. Now we don't need to ch change anything on the other location settings. We don't need it. We don't, we, well, you know, I say that, but again, in your case, you may want to. Right, so we want to work on our rotation. So basically this tells us where the flame embers are going to and how the fire, you know, in what direction it's burning. And you can see as I twist this around, you'll see some changes that are basically happening. So what we want to do is we want to make our fire go upwards. And trust me, this is going to be a bit of a, of a problem to work it out. So 90%, sorry, 90 degrees is going that way. And what about 180 degrees? Well, it looks like it's going haywire. Again, it's not really going our way. So it's going to be a bit of an odd one to work this one. Uh, yeah, not going very well. Is it that way? Yeah, I can't really tell. So, I'm just gonna move it a little, just a little step by step, step by step. Let's see. Yeah, something like that. You see, as it as it's as I move it to go towards the towards you know upwards, it basically shifts the shifts the um, the rotation quite a lot um, so I'm gonna tr try and play with these settings now and about there yes this is exactly what we wanted and this is a different type of fire than what I had in the preview isn't it right so again this setting will be doing something as well you got to play with the settings in order to get the result you want now we're gonna play with the scale and you can see the scale is really changing this this texture now even more so we want this at a, let's say, minus 1.8, something like that. And then this other setting, ah, so Z-axis never does anything. I don't even know why it's there. Right, now this is not what we want. So if you go if you go to a minus setting, the fire goes down. If you go to a positive setting, the fire goes up. We don't need to change anything on that for now. One of the things that you see is that our fire clearly hits the borders of the um, uh, of our plane which is not exactly what we want so and we can play with the clamp setting if we want to so again that will decrease some of this stuff some of these things or we can just play with the scale of the actual fire so we've got the fire over here it's quite big we can try and reduce it and then move it something like that but it's not going to help us with our embers as you can see i mean the embers are still flying out everywhere so uh, we've got a noise texture that we can play with. So again, we can try and get these embers down a little bit. I think the details on that somewhere around there. We don't need any distortions. That's going to make a different whole, you know, a whole different effect. Um, I think we may want, so I've moved the fire over here like that. I think the clamp is going to be our really our only solution here. 
um, not the happiest with that we may want to yeah so we want to lift this up another thing that we want to do is we can play with these settings and try and reduce some of these here you can do that you can, you can really blow the whole thing up now we definitely want to play with this um, with, with these settings over here now so as I move the color ramp you know, maybe I want something like that. I think I want to increase the speed as well. So we'll go to a minus 0 0.05 and that looks definitely a lot better. Uh, we can go into our world setting and make this all black so you can see it better. Now, as I've said, I'm still not very happy on the actual, you know, how the fire sort of disappears in the, in the distance. So we're going to have to change that a little bit. Um, again, it's all about tweaking settings and sorry, not that one we want to add yeah we want to reduce want to reduce this a little bit like that uh, we then may want to play a little bit with the scale and some of the details as well um, and then let's just see what we can do over here don't want to move the fire uh, we want to change it like that this hides it all again okay I think we can also touch with the curves a little bit so you see it makes it makes those uh, swirly things around the fire now it's really all dependent if you want that um, I used to like I liked it more the way it was before so we can play with these curves a little bit but now I think I'll leave it the way it is right now in terms of scale we can try god that, that's a very weird angle isn't it so something like that and i think adding some of the detail may have ruined the effect a little bit so let's just see a three maybe a one point yeah something like that and then we'll just take the scale we can take the scale upwards now we can, if we distort it, this becomes more like a portal than anything. I don't know if you guys ever played uh, Diablo 2, but it definitely looks like portals from there. I mean, I've actually tested this out, and you can make some really interesting portal effects with this, or a sunrise effect, or it's all depending on your viewpoint. As you well remember, this is a flat plane, so nothing really, you know, you can only place this in a flat sort of surface. So yeah i think that's about it in creating this fire and i you know i do believe this is going to be very helpful for you guys and in my upcoming project into this render that i'm trying to make i'm going to be using this effect plus a better looking effect in terms of a 3d looking fire which i've actually got a preview to show you right now so if you have a look on the screen you can see it uh, i'm going to be working on that 3d type of fire so stay tuned if you want to see that tutorial on how i made that um you know that setup i'm just going to zoom out of here so you can see clearly the nodes uh, i'm just going to make this into a full screen uh, trying to so you can now see the nodes and how to set up them how to set them up yourself uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial uh, please leave a like if you did please subscribe and please comment let's be a active community and try and help each other out as much as we can and thank you for watching and have a good day